welcome back to the Sports Sermon. I'm Dylan Staggy. I'm Jason Gandhi. I'm Zach Munson. I'm Michael Bailey. And today we are here to talk to you about the Browns, the 2017 Browns season preview. So let's start it off. Last year, the Browns finished with a 1-15 record, and if you watched our Jets podcast, they uh, made our list, every one of our lists, for the worst teams in NFL history. The Browns had a lot of quarterback trouble, five different guys making at least most of a game uh, playing that, and Terrell Pryor even had to come in for a few game, for a few plays one time. And Isaiah Crowell and Ter- Terrell Pryor were solid on the offensive side, both solid contributors, but outside of that, not many bright spots for the 2016 Cleveland Browns. So let's move into this year, making a lot of moves in the offseason, especially through the draft. The Browns uh, on the offensive side, still not a very solid team. But Jason, what do you have on the Browns offense? Uh, so you look at the quarterback spot, and you've got four okay options of Cody Kessler, Brock Osweiler, Deshaun Kaiser, and Kevin Hogan. All four of them, flash potential but you don't really know. They're all kind of question marks. Kessler got hurt. Osweiler played great in Denver, was awful in Tet- uh, Houston. Kaiser has great arm strength, but we don't know about what about his composure and all these other question marks around him. And then Hogan's one of the smartest players, the smartest quarterbacks in the league, but we don't know if he has the tools to actually get the job done. I mean, I th- <laughs> the Browns, I think, have the four best backups. Exactly. The They're NFL. all great <laughs> backups. Just, it's a matter of who's going to beat out the rest of the backups and be an okay starter. Uh, running back wise, it's looking a little slim at Isaiah Crowell, Duke Johnson, and George Atkinson the third. George Atkinson the third is more of a returner and he's pretty good there. He was on the Raiders for a little bit. Receiver, it's all one year vets and Kenny Britt. You got Kenny Britt, but then you got Corey Coleman, Jordan Payton, Richard Higgins, and Ricardo Lewis. All drafted in last year's draft. If you guys remember that crazy, like, seven receivers taken in last year after, like, 12 picks in the draft. Tight end is actually my favorite spot that they have. David and Joe doing Seth DeValve. I think both of them are going to have somewhat of breakout seasons, like breakout for the Browns. They're not going to have, like, huge numbers. Everyone knows their name, but they're going to be, like, their best players. Similar to like what Gary Barnage did a few years ago. I think those two are going to have great years. And then their O-line is solid as always. With Joe Thomas, Kevin Zeitler, and Joel Batonio leading it, and then J.C. Treader at the center position. So really, O-line and tight ends, they're up front, they're fine. It's just those skill positions, which are kind of important. Yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> Let's move into the defense, though. Their defensive line, a few decent pieces, but not a lot of depth. Miles Garrett, the number one pick. Danny Shelton and Emmanuel Ogba will be leading the Browns' defensive line well, this year. Ogba was taken early, too, wasn't he? I think all three of those guys are either first-rounders or early second. Shelton was taken 12th, yeah. yeah. Garrett was first. And I think Ogba was like late first or early second. Yeah, I think all of, all of those guys um, have a lot of potential. Yeah, they have potential. Yeah. Um, I mean, so far, though, Ogba and Shelton haven't really worked out a ton. We'll see if they continue to improve. Yeah. At the linebacker position, the Browns are led by Jamie Collins, who they traded for with the Patriots last year. Uh, they also got Dominique Alexander and Christian Kirksey, who just got a big new contract. So Collins and Kirksey are pretty solid. Not sure uh, how well Dominique Alexander will do. But a few solid pieces. Not a lot of depth behind those guys, though. At the cornerback position, they've got Joe Hayden, Jason McCourty, and Jamar Taylor. Jamar Taylor had three picks for the Browns last season. And I forgot they got McCourty. That's right. They do have Jason McCourty now. Yeah, That's so right. solid cornerbacks, actually. The Browns um, will be looking good there. And at safety... Uh, Jabril Peppers, who they drafted, and uh, Calvin Pryor, who they traded for uh, with the Jets. So solid safeties. And when you look at this defense as a whole, there's a lot of talent. Guys like Miles Garrett, Jamie Collins, Joe Hayden, um, and Jabril Peppers. But a lot of holes, not much depth in the defense for the Cleveland Browns. I know our fans are disappointed, but our special teams guru is not with us today. So we will not have any special teams so we apologize for that, for the lack of special teams depth. So let's go right into the schedule analysis. Game one against the strong Pittsburgh Steelers, but they are home. Any chance of an upset, Zach? Uh, there's no chance of an upset. Ben Roethlisberger, Le'Veon Bell, Antonio Brown, way too much for the Browns. The Browns are going to start off 0-1. 
Yeah, I agree. I have a not close, easy loss, and both teams are. It's pretty obvious both teams are not on the same level. Yeah, week one, these young guys for the Browns are not going to be ready for the offense of the Steelers. Roethlisberger, Bell, and Brown will dominate. Yeah, I don't see um, the Browns having a chance. I mean, Steelers, Ben Roethlisberger, and like and company. I just there's no way. All right, week two. The Browns travel to Baltimore to play another division matchup at the Ravens. Jason, who do you have? Uh, I have another loss, I think, at Baltimore. Too young, and it might be Kaiser playing, who just signed his rookie deal yesterday, or it might be Brock Osweiler. So it's really a question mark, but either way, neither of them are consistent enough to play. Um, I got another L for the Browns. Back-to-back division games start off the season, one at home, and now this one on the road. It Ravens are too much for the Browns. Yeah, I don't, I don't see them beating the Baltimore Ravens on the road. It's just maybe later in the season their home game. I actually see them winning that one, Me but uh, not on the road. Yeah, week two, the Ravens a veteran team. The Browns not on the road division matchup. No way they get the win there. Yeah, week three at the Indianapolis Colts. Uh, Dylan and I have gone back and forth multiple times on here about how he's very high on the Colts. I'm very not. But I think the Colts do get the win here, and the Browns fall to 0-3. Uh, I got another loss for the Browns against the Colts. Andrew Luck, although he has um, problems coming off his surgery in the offseason, he'll be back, and he'll be in the, back in the discussion for a top three or top five quarterback in the NFL. I also have the Browns losing. The Colts are just way more talented and way better developed than the Browns. Yeah, the Colts another veteran team. Uh, the Browns not. Still early in the season, and it's at the Colts. No way the Browns get the upset there. Yeah, week four, home for the Bengals. I think it'll be close, but I do not think that the Browns pull it out. They are 0-4. Week four, um, I got that the Browns lose to the Bengals. Um, tough beginning following the Steelers, Ravens, and Colts, and then now the Bengals. That's a pretty tough uh, beginning of the season, but they're going to start off 0-4. Even though they are at home, Bengals are a good team, and they'll beat the Browns week four. Yeah, the Bengals will have a solid about average season, um, and it is home. I think it'll be close, like Jason said, but I don't think the Browns can get it done yet. All right, week five. The first win for the Cleveland Browns against the very sad New York Jets. There is no position that's looking positive. So the Jets fall to 0-5, and, and the Browns get their first win. I got the Browns winning this one as well. Um, they both have quarterback issues, both rebuilding teams. But uh, I see the Browns pulling this one out. How many people watch that game? Ten? Like, it's a <laughs> battle of the two worst teams. Exactly. It's so ugly, such ugly football. Oh, that'll be a bad game. Yeah, both teams are in shambles, really, and that's. But I think the Browns can beat them just because they're at home. Just because they're at home. Yeah. Yeah, the Jets not gonna have a solid season. We all predict them to have one or two wins in that podcast. Um, no, no way the Jets can travel to Cleveland. I think they'll be motivated and put the pieces together against the Jets for a win in Week Five. All right, Week Six at the Texans. I like a win. I'm very low on Deshaun Watson. I don't think he'll have what it takes at Week Six. I like Brock Osweiler in this game. I think he will be the starter, and I think he'll have a little reunion back home and prove to the Texans they shouldn't have traded him. So I like the Browns getting the win here and getting a two-game winning streak. I have the Browns losing this game. At this point in the season, I think Deshaun Kaiser will be the quarterback. So basically, it'll be, I think it'll be two teams who just do not want Brock Osweiler, which is pretty funny. Um, but it would be interesting if Osweiler did play his former team, but um, I have the Texans winning this one. I think Deshaun Watson and the Texans will be... Um, Pretty uh, well going by this point, and I think they'll they'll be on a run, actually, and uh, I think they'll get this win against the Browns. Wow. Yeah, I also have a win for the Texans, although the Browns will have a solid game and it'll be clicking a little bit by this part of the season. The Texans are just have too much talent. Their defense is too good for the quarterback troubles of the Browns. Week 7, a team I'm high on, the Tennessee Titans. I like what they're putting together, and the Browns get blown out at home. Uh, to the Titans. I agree. I have the Titans defeating the Cleveland Browns. Um, a lot of people have the Titans winning the AFC South this year, which I, I don't know. Those people. Which I don't know about that. But Marcus Mariota, he's grown so much as a quarterback, and I think they're going to pull up the dub. Yeah, the Titans are a really good young team, and I think I also have them beating the Browns here. 
yeah, that makes four of us. Uh, Titans, again, a solid team. Going to be much improved this year and keep the development of Marcus Mariota going. No way they should be losing to the Browns. Week 8, you are home technically, but it's at London against the Minnesota Vikings right before the bye week. I think it'll be close because the Browns, you know, they really have put in a lot of effort this game and they get a week off and get to travel back from London. But I think the Vikings pulled out, dropping the Browns to 2-6 and six on the year. Yeah, I have the Browns losing this one. I also think it'll be close. Being in London, it'll be kind of a weird game for both teams. But I like the Mike Zimmer defense in this one. Yeah, I also agree. Vikings, really good defense, and I think they can uh, stop the Browns. Yeah, the still a lot of quarterback troubles in Vikings defense. Too good, although their offense won't uh, make it enough to blow the Browns out. I think it'll be close, and the Vikings get a win. Guys, they will not lose next week. It is a bye week. Week 9 is a bye <laughs> week, so that's all good. So now we're going to week 10. Going into the bye, I have 2-6. Do you guys all have them at 1-7 now? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. week 10, they get back on a lot of losing, in my opinion. It's the start of a four-game, five-game losing streak as they take on the Lions, and it's not close. Matthew Stafford, too much. Yeah, I agree. Matthew Stafford's too much for the Browns. Um, they're a year removed from a playoff playoff team, and I think the Browns lose, fall to 1-8. Yeah, I agree. The Lions are a good team, and uh, definitely at home, I think the Lions will be able to beat the Browns. Yeah, Lions, again, going to be pretty solid this year. Pretty average, but... Better than the Browns, they get the win. All right, week 11, I've got them home against the Jaguars. I have a feeling Don will have them getting a win here because you're low on the Jaguars. No. And it's just, you have to, okay. Well, I like the Jaguars winning this. I think they'll blow them out. I think the Jaguars are going to have a good year this year. And so I like the Jaguars winning, dropping the Browns again. I actually like the Browns this game at home against the Jaguars. I do not believe in Blake Bortles at all. Oh, my um, gosh. Somehow Deshaun Kaiser will pull out a W in this game. But I don't know how it'll happen, but I think they're going to win. Um, I think the Jags are actually a good team. There we go. It's a lot to hear. And I think they'll be the Browns here, even if, even in Cleveland, for sure. The Jags are fantastic on paper. <laughs> but I, I think they go to Cleveland and get the win here. Uh, too much talent. Uh, the Browns have even less than the Jags. And I think they get the win. At Cincinnati in Week 12, loss. Andy Dalton, AJ McCarron, one of their la- one of their last few wins in their season. I think that the Bengals get that win, and the Browns drop another one, three straight now. Yep, I have the Browns losing this game. Um, Andy Dalton's way better quarterback than whoever the Browns will have, probably Deshaun Kaiser. But um, yeah, they're going to sweep them this year. In Cincy, there's no way the Browns win this game. I have the Bengals winning this. Yeah, maybe if it was at Cleveland, I would think about giving the Browns a win here. But it is at Cincinnati. Cincinnati might be trying to make a run at the playoffs by this time. Uh, I don't think the Browns can go to Cincinnati and get the win. All right, week 13 at Los Angeles in the new stadium. I like the Chargers. I think they're going to have a good year this year. Not good, but like better than they had this, year, uh, this past year. They lost a lot of games right at the buzzer and like right at the end. And so I like the Chargers getting back on track with the win here. Yeah, I have the Chargers also winning. Phillip Rivers is, will be too much. And this might be one of his uh, last few years to have a playoff season. So, yep, I got the Chargers. On the road, I don't see the Browns winning this one. Chargers win. I'm going to go with a Browns win at Los Angeles. Kind of a random upset. But I think the Chargers will be about average. The Browns playing to for pride at this point, and I think they will not have a 1-10 record. It will be 2-10 after week 12. Going to, or sorry, home for the Packers. Yeah, there's nothing else to say. It's a loss. They're <laughs> dropping 2-11. Yeah, 2-11. They're losing this one. Uh, Aaron <laughs> Rodgers, way too much. One of the great quarterbacks. Yeah. Packers are just such a good team. Browns can't handle If the Packers did not put a defense out there, I think they'd still win. No way the Browns get this one. (laughs) Yeah, I don't think Aaron Rodgers will need another another, uh, Hail Mary to beat the Browns in this one. Yeah. Uh, Week 15, home for the Ravens. Mike, I'll let you take this one first. You hinted at it earlier. I think the Browns can actually beat the Ravens uh, at home. You know, they obviously need a win because they're either um, one or two wins. Uh, Most of us have them. So uh, I think they'll get the win here. Yeah, I'm also going to give the the Browns a win. 
versus the Ravens. It is at home, and neither team's going to be fighting for a playoff spot. I think the Browns get the win. Yeah, I also have the Browns getting a win here. I think the Ravens are going to be – this will be their loss that gets them out of the playoffs. I actually have the Ravens winning this game. The Browns will have two wins at this point. They're going to be wanting to tank for a better draft position, so I feel like they're going to lose this game. All right. Week 16 at the Bears. I think that the uh, – the um, sorry, the Browns also get the win. Get a two-game win, two game winning streak. I'm not high on Glennon, not high on Trubisky. Browns get the dub. I have um, – these teams both suck. Okay, and this this game will not mean anything at all. Nobody will probably watch this it's game. It's Christmas Eve, I think, right? Yeah, nobody will probably watch this game besides Bears fans. And um, so I feel like the home team will win this one, so I have the Bears winning. Um, the Browns coming off a win uh, at home against Baltimore. I think they will win on the road. Um, I don't really like the Bears. I don't think they're a good team at all, and so I think the Browns will win. Yeah, the Bears' defense is an absolute mess. I think the Browns go on the road, get the win, and 3-1 and one in the last four weeks for me, for the Browns. All right, last game of the season at the Pittsburgh Steelers. Will they end on a three-game winning streak? Uh, no, not even close. Yeah, I also have the the Browns losing. There's, I don't, Once again, they're going to be wanting to tank for a play for a good draft spot, and uh, they're just not going to win this game. The Steelers could be fighting for a bye in this game, so I think there's no way that the Browns will be able to beat them. Yeah, the Steelers are definitely have something to fight for, whether it's a bye or a playoff spot. Um, I think that the Steelers will run all over the Browns in Week 17. So let's move into headline for the Browns for the 2017 season. Michael, what do you have? My headline is still miles away from the Super Bowl. They've got a lot of work to do before they're uh, Super Bowl contenders, and so. But I think their uh, th- their basic steps are there. Miles My, Garrett, great player. Yeah, mine's pretty simple. Again, don't be last. I don't think they're gonna have to worry about it, as the Jets are gonna secure that. Maybe going on 16. But I think that's their goal is to not be the worst team this year. My headline is the Browns continue their journey to find a quarterback and not be the worst. So they were one of fifteen last year. They don't want to have another. They don't want to go zero sixteen, but they got to fight to not be the worst. And uh, hopefully they end their long list of quarterbacks for the Browns. Uh, hopefully they find a Sean Kaiser. If not, they'll look to get someone like Sam Darnold next year in the draft. All right, mine's going to be trust the process. Uh, the Browns, the seventy sixers of the NFL will continue to tank, have a lot of great draft picks in the 2018 draft. I think they'll be able to cash in and start rebuilding and being a solid team in three or four years. They are on the right track. So, the Browns, one of the worst franchises in the NFL since their creation, have not done too well, never won a Super Bowl. So, we are going to rank the top five worst franchises in the NFL. Jason, who do you have first? I went, number five. I went the Cincinnati Bengals. They have only been to the Super Bowl twice, and they lost to the San Francisco 49ers both time in 1981 and 1988. So I have the Cincinnati Bengals coming in at number five. Although they went to the Super Bowl twice, I still don't think that they will come in. That they, I mean, there, there's, there's an argument for some teams that never made the Super Bowl, but... When you've gone twice and they've really just been heartbreakers, so I don't Bengals apply. At five, I got the Jacksonville Jaguars. Um, they never made the Super Bowl and they haven't made the postseason since the, since the 2007 season. I'm gonna give all the new newer franchises a break yeah. in this one because they haven't really had the time. I'm gonna go with at my number five, the Jets. They did win the Super Bowl in 1968, but only two division titles since then and have basically been. Irrelevant. Yeah, I have the Jets at my number four. We basically summed it up. Uh, the last little bit of glory they have is with Mark Sanchez, and we know how that worked out. So, yeah, I have the Jets coming in at four. Um, at four, I have the Bengals. Um, as we've already said, they reached for a bowl in uh, 88 and 81, and they lost the 49ers both times. So, At my number four, I'm going to go with the Arizona Cardinals. Only five division titles in 50 years. Uh, have not won a Super Bowl, and although they've been good in the past few years with Carson Palmer, Larry Fitzgerald did reach the Super Bowl and lost to the Steelers, uh, still have not really 
had a sustained success. At number three, I went Cleveland Browns. They lost to L.A. three times in the AFC Championship, and just such a sad franchise. At number three, I have the Buffalo Bills. Um, in their dynasty team, they they are they lost four Super Bowls, and um, so they they choked, and so you can't really put them too high. All right, my number three, I'm going to go with the Bengals. Uh, two Super Bowl appearances and only two Hall of Famers in their 47 years of existence. Uh, the Bengals not really having sustained success at really any point. Yeah, uh, my number two, I want Buffalo Bills. Zach kind of talked about it. But the only reason I went there is I know they won Super Bowls, but I feel like if you lose four times in a row in the Super Bowl, you cannot be a pretty successful franchise. And you've never won the Super Bowl, so you don't really have any like trophies for it. They just went there and lost, so they came in at my number two. Uh, my number two, I have the Cleveland Browns. Um, as I've mentioned earlier, they're a long-standing list of quarterbacks who have failed in the franchise and um, coming off one of 15 season. Yeah, I also have the Browns at number two. Um, did have success in the real olden days, but nowadays, like Zach said, the sustained uh, quarterback kind of controversy every year all I can think of when I think of the Browns is that jersey outside the Cleveland store that has every Browns quarterback since, I think, 1999, 2000, around then. Tim Couch. Oh, yeah, Just first one on there. <laughs> but, yeah, Browns not good at all, especially in recent years. I don't know if this is consensus, but it was pretty obvious for me. I went Detroit Lions. They had two stars retire in their prime, and... The season where they went winless kind of makes you the worst ever if you can't even win a game one year. I also had the Lions. Um, a big part of that was their win this season. That was really sad. Um, <laughs> not, not much to say about them. Yeah, I also have the Lions at number one. I didn't even think about the two stars re- retiring in their prime like Jason yeah, said. Yeah, Megatron and Barry said. Yeah, <laughs> that's not a good look for the franchise. <laughs> worst season ever and haven't even reached the Super Bowl. Yeah. All right. So... Coming up on the sports sermon, there's a lot of good stuff coming. Uh, we just posted um, on YouTube. <clears throat> sorry, we just posted our Kings preview, and so tomorrow we've got the Los Angeles Lakers. What's next for them? Sunday we've got the Phoenix Suns, and it's going to be who they're going to take: De'Aaron Fox, Josh Jackson. Does Lonzo fall that far? Lots of question marks there for the Suns. And then on Monday, the Indianapolis Colts, we get back to football and talk about Dylan's favorite team. And then Tuesday, we put out, or we are putting out our NBA mock drafts two days away from the draft. I'll be at the draft. I know a lot of people will be watching, and we will be putting out our mock drafts. Michael's mock draft is coming out on our website on Friday, so stay tuned for all of that. Yeah, and speaking of our website, check out the link in the description to follow our Twitter account. We will be posting on there every time we post a new article or a new video on YouTube. So follow us on there, and hit the subscribe button if you want to see the rest of our 2017 NFL previews or NBA What's Next series. So thank you guys for listening, and we will see you tomorrow.